Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be going over spont spontaneous symmetry breaking. Now, as you've noticed, I have a mic now, so hopefully the uh, audio will be much better. And if I have the dogs in the room, hopefully this will channel my voice, voice a little bit more and a little bit better. Uh, if you have thoughts or comments on the new mic, please uh, put your comments in the description and hit that like and subscribe button. Now let's get into the material. So we are going to talk about spontaneous symmetry breaking today. This is part of the section of the book. Again, the book being this one right here, No Nonsense Quantum Field Theory, that we're covering. And we're, we're, we're nearing the end of the book. Um, and again, we're talking about spontaneous symmetry breaking. This is where, again, we're getting close to the end of the book. But let's get right into this. So we are, uh, so let's suppose we have the following Lagrangian. So the following Lagrangian, this is your standard scale of Lagrangian. Uh, nothing fancy here. And this is what it looks like. So suppose we want to shift our Lagrangian. Uh, we want to shift the field values, right? So we want to shift these guys right here by some constant. And so we're going to pl plug that in. So, so the, this constant, uh, epsilon, we're plugging it in. And we're going to see what the new Lagrangian looks like when we plug in the shift constant. Well, the derivative with respect to um, uh, with res the, the derivative when applied to these constants, since they're just constants, are going to be zero. All right. So we recover the kinetic term, but with the mass term or this potential term that has the mass in it, we don't recover the same mass term up here, right? We have this new thing right here, which is a consequence of squaring what's inside here. So this mass term sort of is what carries the symmetry, right? Because we don't retain our original Lagrangian. Um, and so if m equals zero, though, then the Lagrangian retains symmetry. So this is important. If there's no mass to our scalar field, then our theory, or our Lagrangian, is symmetric upon a shift, a constant shift. Very, very simple shift. So now let's consider this Lagrangian. We, we want to keep this sort of in the back of our minds when we're thinking about this, but let's consider this Lagrangian now. It's not that much different. The only, the only real difference is this guy right here, but we're going to see it's not going to... It's, not really going to play that much of a role. What's going to play an interesting role is this this sign right here. Um, but this is our but so here's our Lagrangian. Our potential term is this guy right here. So this is v of phi, and v of phi looks like this right here. So our kinetic term minus our potential term. That means our potential term looks like this. Uh, and when we square, or, and when we graph it uh, on an x-axis that is phi and our potential, we get this parabola shape. And you can go ahead and plug this in. You can plug some values in for phi. Use Excel or whatever you want to use to graph something, and it'll it'll end up looking like this. All right. So now, so so, so let's let's think of something here. So. Uh, we have this mass term. If we come up here now, so the idea here is that when the mass was zero, the mass is zero, we, we had, if the mass is zero, then there's symmetry. If the mass was not zero or positive, that means um, uh, if this is positive, then that means there is no symmetry, right? The, the, the mass, again, is what carries the, sort of the non-symmetry part of our Lagrangian, this is the picture we have then, right? So we have, uh, if we have mass and it's positive, then um, eh, then we have no symmetry. If we have, uh, if we don't have mass, i.e. the mass of our field is zero, then we have symmetry. What should we make then of uh, the regime where the and mass squared term is negative, right? This is a, this is an interesting case, and let, let's investigate this now. 
So if we make the transition from m squared to negative m squared, then our self-interacting field gets a potential that looks like this. Again, this guy's not really changed that much, right? Um, but what it's what's gonna what it's gonna do is it's gonna help us define something here because when we take the derivative, right? When we take the derivative, then we find that when we take the derivative and then find the critical points, right? Finding the critical points is setting the derivative equal to zero, and we factor out phi, right? So we take the we factor out phi here. We get this. We'll find that phi can be zero to satisfy critical point, or phi can be plus or negative this value. Right, and this is really just standard calculus and algebra. Um, but this means that phi can be 0 or two other values. Right, and that sort of corresponds, when we graph this function, here's our 0. Right here, here is our plus 6m squared over uh, our interaction constant. And here is our minus... 6m squared interaction constant. And so this is what our new potential looks like. Right? So if this is what our so we're so we've made this switch shift, right? We've said positive m goes to negative m. That was this change right here. We found the derivative, we've and and by setting the derivative, we found two two new critical points. And the whole graph looks like this. All right, so we went from a graph, we went from a potential that looks like this to a potential now that looks like this, with two, uh, with three critical points actually. A one and zero. We don't want to forget that one is zero. Um, so if we transform now, if we if we make the transformation, um, th this transformation right here, phi the new phi goes to negative phi. What we end up finding is that uh, well, we can do it right here, right? If phi, if the minimum phi in this case is say equal to plus six m squared over this over our coupling constant, our new phi and our new phi is equal to our the negative of our of our original this is the transformation this is just a simple transformation not really uh, this is just a simple transformation and this means that phi the new phi min is equal to negative 6m squared over pi however in this case down here it phi min equals zero our new phi min uh, if our new phi min equals the negative of our uh, old phi min well that just means that phi min equals zero so in this case phi min is equal to zero. I just redundant. That's redundant. What I mean to say is phi min is equal to, and this is a symmetry. That's a symmetry right here, because those are the same. However, in this case here, phi min, phi nu min, is not equal to phi min, right, because this is the negative of this right here. So by virtue of of going from negative to negative m squared, we lose symmetry, right, because our, our phi mins are not conserved. So we lose symmetry. So this means that if we go for, on the spectrum that we have here, uh, positive mass, we said there was no symmetry. When mass is zero, right? It, when mass is zero, then uh, there is symmetry, and we now sh we've now seen that if mass is negative, there is no symmetry again under the condition again that there's 
the, the, the way we needed to do this was to employ the self-interacting Lagrangian. Okay. So basically what's going on here is that there's a very fine line where there is no, where there is symmetry, right? So then that fine line is where the mass equals zero. So, but as we know in the real world, mass is not equal to zero. My pen has a mass, you have a mass, I have a mass, the chair I'm sitting in has a mass. So the, when things have mass to them, or when things develop mass, i.e. if something cools down and it becomes more massive, then it's losing symmetry. And this is where I want to get to next. This is a very, very interesting uh, point to make because um, w when I mention things gaining more mass, say, say you go from a gas to a solid, well, the solid has more mass than the gas, right? And l let's think about this because the... Um, if we consider a gas, if we consider a gas, it's very random. If we rotate it in any way, here I've actually rotated this. I, I copy pasted this and put it right here, and I actually rotated it. From a bird's eye view, it looks like nothing's really changed that much, right? It's it all just looks like a bunch of random particles. So we could say that there is symmetry when we have a gaseous state. Uh, occur when we have when we're dealing with some gaseous state however if things cool down however if things cool down hopefully you didn't hear the dogs um, if things cool down then uh, we get a lattice structure right say so, so we go from a gas to some lattice structure we're cooling things down and we then we rotate this guy. Well, that looks a little bit different, right? If we can, we could trace a triangle around this, right? And then we trace a triangle around here. Well, we rotated this by say some arbitrary angle. These don't look the same anymore under this rotation. So that means no symmetry. Okay. And we go from, uh, so, so, so when we go from gas to solid, we're losing symmetry, right? This is this is kind of an interesting thing to think about, and this is something that the book also talks about as well. Um, the book, what the book doesn't talk about, is this concept of entropy. Now, I'm not going to get too much into this because if you've taken thermodynamics, then you know that a high entropy system is a system where uh, if you make a change, a small change in the system then the overall properties of the system don't change. That's sort of what the definition of entropy is. Um, and in a gaseous state, if you make a small change in one of the particles, the overall properties of the gas don't change. And so that's what's defined as high or very positive energy or entropy. Right, so we, we're, we're, starting, we're starting here with symmetry, associating that with a high entropy state. No symmetry we can attribute to a low entropy state or perhaps a negative entropy state where um, an entropy state uh, is, again, we have uh, any small change in, uh, in the lattice structure could be quite detrimental to the structural or functional properties of that of that lattice structure, right? So we go from symmetry to no symmetry, and in some thermodynamic sense, we're going from high entropy to low entropy. So, again, here's our picture. I'm not going to reiterate this picture again, but again, we have positive mass, negative mass squared, uh, symmetry at zero, right? And then no symmetry and no symmetry within these regimes. Quantum mechanically, this means that uh, the probability amplitude between two states, uh, there's going to be symmetry there. And as things evolve into no symmetry, or as entropy follows its course, and we get a lack of symmetry as that progression goes forth, then on the quantum mechanical scale, we actually go from one minima, right? We went from 
one minima, or from one minima to to two minimum, right? That's these two guys right here. We actually have two ground states now, right? So we have one ground state that in which our potential defines zero. Now we have two ground states. This could be sort of thought of as, again, two ground states here. Um, so quantum mechanically, this no symmetry actually means there's two ground states uh, to our system, which is quite interesting to think about. And so, with all that being said, this is a pretty short video, we're only about 15 minutes into this video, but that's all I really want to talk about. In our next video, we're going to be talking about spon spontaneous mass generation. And spontaneous mass generation is something that's a consequence of interaction theories, right? So when uh, you have a complex uh, scalar, say, interacting with a spinner, um, we have our... In our interaction term and our interaction term specifically what we talked about was our Yukawa term or our Yukawa interaction term and that Yukawa interaction term is going to show us something very interesting about what uh, it means to uh, for mass to spontaneously come into existence and that's going to be a relatively short video but it's very very interesting so if you like this kind of content I will see you guys in the next one